Hey guys, today we're working on a laptop. It's a Asus ZenBook UX363. Let's try to press the power button it's on the side here. Nothing good. Let's open this laptop up and fix it. Customer already took all the screws. So, the battery is disconnected. Before we plug back the battery, let's uh, measure. So if we have some kind of short on the board, we don't want to power the system on. Let's get our multimeter, go into continuity mode, ground probe to some ground. So we can start measuring. Ground is good. Let's check coils. So we have the charging coil here and that's not shorted to ground. Then let's check the main power rail here. Zero ohm. Zero ohm. So we have short on our main power rail, looks like. Let's check our CPU coils. 60 ohm. Good. Another coil. That's for the chipset, probably. 60. No, that's another phase for the CPU. Good. So if we find a shorted coil here, we are pretty much done. Then we know the main power rail has shorted to CPU core. And yeah, we can throw this board away. This is open line, good. So let's check resistances on the remaining coils. Um, this one, 1 1.3 kilo ohm, okay. Charging coil, yes, high resistance, good. Let's remove the sticker here. In case we have anything under there, yes. So we have a coil here. 40 ohm, probably the RAM. Good, it's okay. Several kilo ohms is okay. And 15 kilo ohms is okay. What do you think? Is it a bad capacitor? Let's get out the board out of the chassis because we have to find the short on the board. Let's move under the microscope, visually inspect the whole board because the customer has to uh, look at the board himself. And then we will find the shot on the main power rail. Okay, we will start with the back here. I will do a full visual inspection and then we will see what we find, yeah? Everything is looking fine. I made a visual inspection of the whole board. There's nothing visually wrong. I will now explain you how to find the main power rail because I skipped ahead and just showed where it is. But you can find a main power rail on any laptop uh, when you look at the VRAM circuit. So you have the CPU and usually you have uh, two or three or four or seven CPU core voltage regulator modules which generate around one volt uh, for the CPU. And next to them, yeah, on the input, you have a capacitor for filtering the main power rail. And on these, you can measure the main power rail very easily and they are easy to identify. Take a look here. I will put one probe on ground, preferably the black one. And then this side of the capacitor is supposed to be ground. Yeah, you can visually see that the trace connects to it. And the other side is the main power rail, so 19 volts. And that is not supposed to be ground. And we still have zero ohm to ground there. We will now inject one volt at, I don't know, three amps and see what is getting hot. Like that, we find the faulty component and we checked all the sub rails. There is no short sub rail. So we can say pretty sure it's a bad capacitor. For a good injection, I solder a small wire uh, to the place I want to inject to, so I don't slip with the probe. For this task, I have to set the bench power supply to uh, 1 volt, and we will current limit at 3 amps. So, let's connect the probes. Minus and plus. Now we connect the probes together. I will go down with amperage. 
we don't get too many sparks. And I will limit our current to 3 amps. I'm doing this example without the thermal camera on purpose because um, with the thermal camera it's easy and I want the people who don't have a thermal camera still be able to do this task. Next we clip the negative to a ground, for example here, the positive probe to the main power rail. Because we are not using the thermal camera, I have to use my finger. So I am going around the board and checking if I can feel anything getting warm. I am enabling the output power at 3 amps now. And now I will have to feel around, yeah? Putting my finger everywhere, checking if anything is getting hot. Once I find something, I will report back, yeah? Oh, I can already feel something here. Yes, my finger is getting burned. So actually right here, right next to where we were injecting, we are using a second trick now by just putting some alcohol in the area and seeing where it evaporates first. So this is some 99% isopropyl alcohol. And let's turn on now. Can you see what is the problem? Look, I'm putting isopropyl alcohol on both capacitors, but on the right one, the alcohol is evaporating instantly. So that's our little friend. Let's remove him really quickly. Good, what do you think? capacitor has been removed and we can now recheck the resistance on our main power rail. One probe on ground, other probe on the main power rail and now we have got several kilo ohm. No, it's a million ohm even. So we have cleared the short on the main power rail. We can even now check the capacitor out of circuit and yeah we can see that it's shorted. Customer, of course, is getting some new thermal paste. And we will power. So it's not really reacting to the power button at all. Let's connect the battery and check if anything changes. Maybe we have another problem in the DC input circuit. Oh, did you see it? Look at this. Yeah. Good. Okay, we do now know that the laptop and the mainboard is generally working, but we have some additional problem in the DCN circuit. That is why the laptop is working through the battery, but not when I just connect the charger. Also, the laptop is not charging the battery, by the way. I went to check the DC input circuit. I first checked the current sense resistor here, which is fine. Then I checked the MOSFETs. This is the second one, and this is the first one. And this one is shorted. Uh, I also checked, and it's also shorted to the gate with 30 ohms. So we will now next remove this MOSFET. We will now wait a second for the board to cool down and then we will remeasure. Let's measure the MOSFET out of circuit. And yes, it's shorted. On the board, we now no longer have a short. Now we must check the corresponding gate driver though, because every time a MOSFET fails, it also fails to the gate, which I can show you here. Yes, we also have three ohms to the gate. So our PD controller could have seen high voltage, like 19 volt. We will select diode mode, put red on ground this time, and probe the gate pin of the MOSFET on the board. And we see we have 0.7 diode drop on the MOSFET that's still good, that didn't blow up. We also have 0.7, so um, we have no problem. Yeah, the PD controller didn't get damaged off this failure.
I will order a new E180AJ MOSFET and we will sell that in. We are two days later and I have received a package from TME. Let's get them out of the package. Brand new MOSFETs. So we can see it's uh, the exactly same font, exactly the same location on the chip. So I would say this is the original chip, yeah? Good. Let's solder this MOSFET in. We will pre tin it first. And let's remove the old one. Yeah, looks good, prepared. So we can now install the new MOSFET using hot air. Let's measure here, is the MOSFET shorted? No, good. Are we shorted to the gate? No. Are we shorted from this side to the gate? No. Have we still got a healthy diode drop on the gate? Yes, very nice. So we confirmed now that the MOSFET is soldered well. And we can reassemble and test the laptop now. Let's give the laptop a test, yeah? Let's plug the battery. Now we have got the big moment of truth, yeah? Let's power on the laptop or press the power button and hope the laptop turns on. And ASUS, very good. Type in the password. That's my test a Windows SSD, by the way. That's not the customer SSD. Okay, so here we go. Plugging in the charger now. And we have a charging sign now, that's good. But the laptop is very slow now, yeah? This thing is throttling. Let's try the other charging port. Still slow, so... Okay, our CPU clock is stuck at 0.4 gigahertz for some reason. Is it only when we're charging? Yes, the clock is going back up. So it looks like we are throttling a lot when we charge. Let's open throttle stop. BD Pro keeps activating and also on rings. It's not supposed to happen. Some component on the mainboard is... Uh, pulling down the processor hot signal, which is bad because this means either our EC chip, our charge IC, or maybe our processor's damaged. So not sure what's this supposed to mean. Okay, so the solution might be very simple because I put my hand on here and this quarter of the battery is getting hot, very hot. The other corner's not, so. I think we have a faulty battery because this one has a sticker on it. Tanch, Tanch. And uh, looks like it's been replaced. This is an aftermarket battery. Good, I have installed the different battery. This is just temporary. If this works, we will uh, get a proper new battery, of course. Okay, here we go. With a uh, known working battery, plug the charger in, with the known working battery we are not throttling and the device is charging fine. See here, charging sign and yes we are at 2.2 gigahertz while charging so the replacement battery was also faulty in this one. So we had to replace the capacitor, a MOSFET and the battery on this one. Like and subscribe if you liked the video and see you in the next one. Bye.